Hello and welcome back to the Milan Save on Foot Manager 2023. Since the last episode, we played two games off camera. In today's episode, we're going to be playing both games in the Champions League group stage against Club Bruges, home and away. But before we get into that, we need to have a look at a few things that have happened since the last episode. So we start things off with some bad news, an injury to one of our starting 11, Matteo Gabbia, who's been partnering Fikio Otomori at centre-back all season pretty much has picked up an injury in training. It's a broken ankle as well, so it's it's quite a bad one. He's going to be out for a further seven weeks to three months from now. This injury occurred in training before our first game off camera against Sampdoria. And we, we do have backup for him, but it's obviously unfortunate for him to, to miss such a large part of the season. We then played that game against Sampdoria and we played a slightly rotated squad. A lot of the players were a bit tired from the previous Champions League game against FC Porto. So quite a few names that wouldn't regularly be in our starting eleven. Gouveia kicked off the scoring for us in the seventh minute. And then Bielek, one of the players that we brought in in the summer, the striker, he scored his first goal for the club. He missed he missed a handful of guilt edge opportunities leading up to his first goal, but he finally got it, the Polish 21-year-old. Hopefully it's going to kickstart him getting more games for us and more goals for us as well. But he has finally opened his goal scoring books with us with the, the second goal against Sampdoria. And then it was Pierre Kalulu, the man who's going to get a bit more game time now that Matteo Gabriel is out injured. He scored on the 82nd minute with an assist from Divock Origi. So we won that one 3-0. And we'll go back to Divock Origi now just for a second as there's some news regarding him. He is a much-loved player of mine, uh, obviously from his time at Liverpool. But we, we had an offer... And it was an offer that we couldn't really refuse. £10 million was the offer from Shabab Al Ali. I'm not actually sure what country they're from. The From the UAE, Shabab Al Ali, they bid £10 million for Divock Origi. And that, that was more than his valuation. So he's gone. Divock is gone. Their transfer window is open currently. So we've he's, he's gone immediately, pretty much. I can see he's already played once for them. He's scored already. So he's having a, a good time out there. It just made sense. For both sides, we were paying him 80, 87 grand, I think, a week. He wasn't playing week in, week out. He's now got an even bigger wage. So it's a win-win. Sad to see him go, but yeah, we've got we've got plenty of striking options. And then our second game off camera was away from home to Bari. And it despite all our efforts on goal, we couldn't, for the life of us, score a goal. Giroud was was rested for this one with the, the game against Club Bruges in mind. Bielek starting again, it didn't didn't score this time. He had a 6.5 rating, which wasn't great. We did bring Giroud on with about 15 or 20 minutes to go, but he couldn't even get a, a goal for us. He did have an opportunity quite late on, but he just scuffed his shot straight at the keeper. And we ended up drawing this one, nil-nil. Feels like a loss though. As you can see, we, we had a much better XG, but we just we didn't have the finish in. And that result means that we find ourselves in fifth place in Serie A, four points behind our bitter rivals into and it's it's still very tight there. We've obviously only played eight games, plenty of time left in the season for us to get up there. But today's focus is, of course, on the Champions League. There's been some games played already. The early kickoffs have happened in Group E with Tottenham beating Olympiacos by four, five goals to nil. And the other game in our group between FC Porto and Celtic ending in a nil-nil draw, which I believe means we will remain top of the group regardless of what happens. Indeed it does. So we've played two. We've got six points. Porto in second have played three with four points. So uh, a win today puts us five points clear with three games left. A nice position to be in. Hopefully we can do it. So the lineup that we're going to go with for this away game at Club Bruges is as follows. We've got Mike Minan in goal. We've got Singo at right back. Kalulu and Tamori continuing their partnership in central defence with Theo Hernandez at left back. Sandro Tonali and Thomas, Tommaso Pobega are our defensive midfielders when I can get my words out as Ishmael Bonesa is in need of a bit of a rest. Thiago Gouveia is at right wing. Charles Ketelea attacking centre midfield with Rafa Leao on the left wing. And Olivier Giroud returns to the starting lineup up top, hoping to continue his fine vein of goal scoring form. First chance of the game where deep down the left hand side with Theo taking a throw in. He gets the ball back from Pobega. Ball into the box. It's going to deflect through to Giroud. Just needs to turn, but instead plays the ball back out to Theo. Theo on the edge of the box now. Comes into the box a bit further and it's just over the bar from Theo Hernandez. 
Leao with it down the left hand side plays it back to Teo Hernandez the man that seems to be involved in everything so far today ball forward from him looping towards Giroud headed away by Silla but Leao chests that down and brings it down nicely ball inside to Thiago Gavea falls to De Ketelea. the defence back off it's De Ketelea and it's saved by Mignolet I'm assuming that's Simon Mignolet former Liverpool goalkeeper Thiago Gavea ball inside to De Ketelea. bad touch from him but he's somehow managed to hold on to the ball De Ketelea advancing into the box now gets taken a bit wide Comes inside now. Charles de Ketelier with a shot and it's curled just off the bar. That initially when that left his foot, it looked like it was going out for a corner, but it whipped some distance to hit off the bar eventually. And now Club Bruges coming forward with the ball with Clinton Mata. Leao with a great challenge though. And now de Ketelier can bring the ball forward for us as de Ketelier is running down this left-hand side. Plays it inside to Rafa Leao. Teo Hernandez in space on the left, which Leao finds him in. Now Teo Hernandez... Ball bounces up, but he plays across anyway. Gavea with a header, and that is an easy save from Mignolet. Thiago Gavea now on the ball, just inside the Club Rouge half. Finds Wilfred Singo at right back. Through ball forward from him towards the Ketelier, but Silla does get there at the back for Club Bruges. But Rafa Leao has now got on the left-hand side. Leao into the box now. Ball into the box. Gavea's there, and Thiago Gavea has opened the score in his fourth goal of the season. He's been one of our better signings of this season Thiago Gavea obviously we let go of Alexis Salamakas in the summer and Thiago Gavea has come in and done a brilliant job in place of him keeping Brahim Diaz out of the team for most of the season it was Leao that picked up the ball after a defensive header that just went straight to him and then Thiago Gavea with a beautifully placed header to get us in front and put us on course for having nine points out of nine after our opening three games of this Champions League group stage obviously a bit of an easier group compared to last year's but we're still getting the job done so far. Uh, we're going to make the one change at halftime. Singo's on a yellow and he's not playing too great. So we will bring Zanoli on for him at right back. But elsewhere, pretty happy with how things are going. I'll keep an eye on Tonali because his condition seems to be deteriorating a bit quicker than everyone else's at defensive midfield. Of course, we've got Malik Thior, the youngster, on the bench who can come on for him. Don't really want to risk Benesa today unless entirely necessary as of course he is lacking a bit in condition too it's all about squad rotation looking after the players condition as we we do have a lot of games in in a short amount of time i guess on Yudika advancing forward down the right hand side of the field finds scob olsen bad touch from him pabega should win that and does and now we can get back on the attack ourselves with pabega forward to rafa leao plenty of options in the box if he wants to find one ball in cleared away by michele it comes out to tonali tonali let's rip and that's just over the bar from the defensive midfielder so just over 15 minutes to go we are going to make a few changes sandro tonali is going to make way for malik Thior in defensive midfield we're gonna bring Brahim Diaz on at attacking center midfield for Charles de Ketelea and then Datro Fafana on for Rafa Leao at left wing and I think we'll just make those changes for the time being just under 10 minutes to go now we've got one more sub that we can make so we are going to take advantage of that we do have a game against Juve coming up in the next couple of games so we'll take this opportunity to rest to Mori I think he's probably one of our more key players in a defense so Simon Kier Coming on for him in the final, fifth and final substitution of this game against Club Bruges. And it's a throw in deep in the Bruges half. Zanoli to take it from this left hand side. Plays it short to Pabega. Into the box now. Brahim Diaz plenty of time and space. It's off Giroud, I think, with a header, and that's just over the bar. I'm not sure if that initial shot from Brahim Diaz was going to go in, but we'll, we'll never know as Giroud got his head to it. And there is the full-time whistle. It's another victory, a 1-0 win this time. We, we we controlled this game away from home in Belgium. And we have nine points now to open our campaign in the Champions League. So elsewhere in the Champions League, we obviously we know about the early kickoffs, but Atletico beating Ajax in the other group, other game in Group E, Leipzig smashing FC Copenhagen by five, four goals to nil, Real Madrid beating Liverpool 3-1 in a repeat of uh, many a Champions League final. And then Dortmund and Leon drawing 1-1 and Red Star Belgrade and Atlanta drawing 0-0 in Group H. Which leaves the groups looking like this before we head into the fourth match day. It's Tottenham Atletico in the lead in Group E. Ajax and Olympiacos, well Ajax not far off. Atletico, the level on points with them in fact. Real Madrid and Leipzig are in the qualification spots from Group F, but Liverpool are level on points with both of those sides, so all three of them on six points. In Group G, of course, we know it's ourselves and Porto in the leading and in the hot seat currently, 
with Celtic just two points behind FC Porto and Club Bruges just three points behind FC Porto. So still all to play for for everyone there. And then in Group H, we've got Borussia Dortmund and Atlanta currently occupying the qualifying spot. What Leon are level on points with Atlanta. So of course all to play for. Uh, the other half of the Champions League haven't played their third match game yet. We'll go through their results when they'll have they'll have played their fifth games. No, they'll have played their fourth games when we next come together for the second game against Club Bruges. In the meantime, we've got games that I'm going to play off camera very quickly against Juve, who are currently third in Serie A, and Verona, who are 15th. So hopefully we can get a result against both of those. So we played those two games off camera, the first of which was against Milan away from home, and we lost that one quite comfortably. Uh, well, if you can ever lose comfortably. Theo Hernandez sent off after 11 minutes, completely switched the game before the game had even got going, really. Chiesa and Vlahovic giving Juve their two-goal lead. Simon Kier with a, a late consolation goal for us, but we were we fell to a 2-1 defeat, and it's pretty much Theo Hernandez's fault. It's been a, a theme of his to get sent off. I'm pretty sure if we look, at, I don't know if it shows you his, uh, his red cards in the past, but he's he's definitely had a lot. Yeah, I can't get I can't get the info for last season, but he, he got sent off multiple times last season. This is his first red card this season. You can see he's already picked up a few yellow cards as well. But he just seems to seems to have it in him to to make late two footed lunges for for no reason. Generally, quite early in the game, and throws the entire team under the bus. And then in the second game at home, we fell one 0 down after seventeen minutes thanks to Tameze, Sandro Tonali saving our blushes to get the equaliser and just under the half an hour mark. But we we couldn't go on and get a winner. A 1-1 draw, which leaves the Serie A table looking like this. 10 games gone and we're 8th in the league. Starting to get a bit concerned now. <laughs> we're 7 points off top of the table, Inter. And we are 3 points off 4th place Udinese. So we really need to start picking things up. But of course, our focus now turns to that second Champions League game. Or the 4th overall in the group against Club Bruges. It's a return game. We obviously beat them at their place by a goal to nil. Can we beat them again at the San Siro? Elsewhere in our group, obviously Celtic are playing Porto again. Um, I think we've got a decent enough gap now to Porto. We've got a five-point gap. So even if we lose today, we would still remain top of the group. You can see elsewhere in the Champions League, a few teams have qualified, mainly from Group D. We'll get to that in a second. In a Group A, still all to play for. Benfica and Shakhtar are in the top two spots. Bayern and Napoli in the top two spots in Group B. Man City and Barcelona, both on nine points in Group C. Then we've got PSG and Inter already qualified after four games played from Group D. Uh, Sporting and Anderlecht fighting it out for the Europa League spot in third place. And then Tottenham and Atletico are leading the way in Group E. Madrid and Leipzig in Group F. Ourselves and Porto in Group G. And Dortmund and Atlanta in Group H. Obviously, more teams could qualify today in today's game, as I realise I've not actually got through to the point where I can play the game. So, two games played in the early kickoff were in Group H Atlanta, beating Red Star Belgrade by three goals to nil, and Leon and Dortmund drawing nil nil, which means it's still very open in Group H. We've got Dortmund on eight points, Atlanta on seven, and Leon on five. Red Star still can theoretically get. Qualification, I think, depending on their results against Atlanta, they've probably lost Atlanta, so I think they're probably out and would be anyway. But we'll switch focus now to ourselves and the game against Club Bruges. So this is the lineup we've got for this game against Bruges. We've got Minen in goal, Zanoli at right back, Kalulu and Tamori in central defence, building a nice partnership. Those two, obviously, Gabi are still out injured. Theo Hernandez returns to the side after his suspension for his red card in the Juve game, which made him miss the Verona League game off camera. Ishmael Benesa and Sandro Tonali are in defensive midfield. Thiago Gouveia at right wing. Charles Ketelea attacking centre midfield with Rafa Leao on the left wing. And Olivia Giroud up front by himself. Hopefully we can get a win. I think a win today could actually confirm our qualification, which would be nice with, with two games to go. That could actually help us get more points in the league as well because I wouldn't have to have to rest people for the Champions League games, which is obviously our, our main focus in this save. Tomori out to the left this side, this time to Tio. Now Rafa Leao, out to Teo again. Can we get launched on an attack? Leao, nice ball over the top to De Ketelea. De Ketelea is through and De Ketelea has opened the score in his first goal of the season. And after less than five minutes, we have taken the lead at the San Siro. And it is an excellent assist, 
as well. Ball over the top. So Teo gets it on the left. Nice little flick inside to Leao, who sees the runner of De Ketelea. Keeper comes out, and he's got no chance once De Ketelea is the first of the ball. 1-0 Milan. Elsewhere in the group, Celtic have taken the lead against Porto, which would mean that we would confirm a qualification today with four wins out of four, and we would be able to rest players for the fifth and sixth match day of the Champions League. It's Benesa to Zanoli. Pays that back to Kalulu. There was plenty of options up there. Now to Nali. Tio's in tons of space on the left, but Kalulu plays it to Benesa instead. Ball into the box now towards Giroud. Giroud with a header, and that is wide. I thought it was going over the top of the keeper there, but in fact, it went past the goal. Liao with a big header there to Benesa. Now Giroud. Can we get a second goal? Brilliant through ball to De Ketelea. He's on for a second here. It's Charles De Ketelea, and he's fired that high over the bar. A great opportunity missed there. Benesa with a good header this time to Thiago Gouveia. Now it's Anoli with the ball at his feet. Plays it back to Kalulu. Teo's in space on the left-hand side, as he seems to be quite often in this game so far. Tomori finds him. Now Teo's trying to skip past his man. He's run at him. He gets past him. Chance to get a ball in, possibly for Teo. To Giroud! And what a volley from Olivier Giroud. It's 2-0 now. 12th goal of the season for the 36-year-old. And it's an ex ex excellent build-up play from Teo Hernandez. And the finish is superb from Olivier Giroud as well. We're 2-0 up now, and it looks like qualification for the knockout stage of the Champions League is confirmed, barring some sort of miraculous comeback from Club Bruges. Fired across into the box by Theo, and then Giroud just had to get a touch on it and direct it towards the goal. Nielsen in an advanced position now for Club Bruges, looking to get a, a goal back and find their way back into this game. Sobol advancing forwards, and only with a slide tackle, and that could be a penalty. The referee has... Given a penalty, it's obviously going to go to VAR to double check that it was in the box, but I feel like this is going to be uh, a penalty that's given for Club Bruges. VAR just checking now, and it is in fact a penalty awarded. So Bruges with a chance to get a goal back as Porto have got a goal back against Celtic. They're now losing 3-1 in the other game in this group. Bruges, of course, still in with a chance of qualifying as the second place team as Mackinan with an excellent save from the penalty by Duclier. And then Tamori sweeping up to clear that for a corner. Brilliant save from Mike Minan. Keeps his clean sheet intact. Theo Hernandez gets the ball back now, running down the left-hand side. He's got us one goal already from this position, but Rafa Leao now takes over. Ball into the box. De Ketelea's there, and De Ketelea gets his second of the game, his second of the season, and we're 3-0 up. We're running riot. It's not even half-time yet. And Milan look like we are going to be in the round of 16. It's Boyata. For Bruges, trying to switch play towards Sobol. Zanoli wins the header though, and now we can get on the attack again, looking for a fourth of the game. Thiago Cavea moving forward now, the right winger. Running down this right-hand side. Can he get a cross in? He's down the byline now, back post towards Leao. Leao heads it down. Tonali's there, and Sandro Tonali gets on the score sheet. It's 4-0, his third of the season. And if it wasn't done before at 3-0, it's definitely over now. A 4-0 win. If, if anyone's looking tired, um, um, I can replace them and not worry about losing. Zanoli, ball forward to Gouveia, now to Ketelea, Giroud, great pass to Rafa Leao. Rafa Leao through on goal, he chips the keeper and sends him the wrong way and sends us into a 5-0 lead. Eighth goal of the season for the Portuguese left winger and 5-0 after less than 50 minutes gone. It was a lot of passing a lot across the back line. It was eventually Giroud who found the through ball to Rafa Leao, who just dinks that, not even over the keeper. He just dinks it into an empty goal because of the keeper's bad positioning. And we find ourselves 5-0 up. Elsewhere in the group, it's still 3-1 to Celtic. And it looks like all three of the other teams in the group are going to be fighting it out over that second spot. 76 minutes gone. We are going to start resting players now, I think. Um... So, Benesa is looking quite tight out there, so we'll bring on Pobega. Tomori's a, a key defender, so we'll take him off, bring on Simon Kier for him. We'll keep Teketelea on, because he's on a hat-trick. We'll take Gouveia off and bring on Brahim Diaz. At left wing, we'll bring on Fafana. And then up front, we'll bring on Junior Messias. That's all five subs made in one sitting, and hopefully, hopefully we don't get an injury in the last 15 minutes or so of the game. Header down from Kalulu to De Catalan, now to Nali, out left to Datro. Datro with a great ball over the top, Messias, can he get a goal? Coming off the bench, he's just pulled that wide, it, hit, it deflected off the defender, but I think he was going wide anyway from Junior Messias, but we do have a corner 
and still an opportunity to get a sixth goal here. Tenali to take the corner from the left-hand side in towards the back post. Pobega's there with a the header and that is always going over the goal. Kalulu, never one for a dangerous pass. Kalulu always just plays the easy pass, which is what you want in a central defender, really. Pobega out to Brahim Diaz. Forward to De Ketelea. Brilliant pass from him. De Ketelea through to Messias. Junior Messias, surely. He's pulled it wide again. Junior Messias showing us why he rarely plays as a striker with his finishing today. But it doesn't matter because it's full time and we've won 5-0. We've confirmed our qualification into the knockout round of the Champions League for the first time in this save. And we can be delighted about that. So there's the confirmation. We've qualified for the round of 16 already with two games to go. This is the, the perfect performance that you'd want to see in the Champions League. Lots of players gaining interest from the Premier League. Chelsea are interested in Pierre Kalulu. Tonali is of interest to Tottenham. And Leao is of interest to Man United. So looking at the second half of the Champions League groups, because obviously we, we'd seen the first half already after match day four, uh, we are the, the only side to have confirmed our qualification as the first place team in the competition, which is what you would have expected when you saw the group that we were drawn in. But still, we've managed to achieve that elsewhere in our half of the, the group stage. Tottenham and Atletico still occupying the top two spots in Group E, but Ajax are level on points with Atletico on five points. In Group F, Leipzig, surprisingly, leading the way in that one on nine points. Real Madrid and Liverpool are second and third on seven points. And then, as you would expect, FC Copenhagen struggling in that one with zero points so far. Obviously, in our group, we have qualified, as I've already said. Celtic are in the second qualifying spot, but they're only a point ahead of FC Porto in third, who in turn are three points ahead of Club Bruges, who are bottom of the group and only have the one point to their name. In Group H, as I think I've already gone through that, Dortmund and Atlanta sitting pretty in the qualification spots. Looking ahead to the next episode we'll obviously come back for the champions league games because that's the focus of the save even though we have confirmed our qualification i might play some of our our lesser played players in those games uh thinking especially the porto one because we do have napoli after that game in the meantime off camera i will play the league games against atalanta who are struggling the the defending champions 10th in the league and Empoli, who are 14th. So hopefully that'll be two wins in the league for us. And then, as I said, we'll be back with the Porto and Celtic games and then Napoli off camera in the middle of the next episode. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified. And I'll see you next time.